Have you ever wondered what your succulent is trying to tell you when it changes the way it grows? It has now been proven that plants can, in a way, communicate with each other and react to the environment around them. If you search can plants talk, some incredibly interesting information pops up. Well, it's definitely interesting if you're a plant geek like me. When succulents experience a stimuli in the environment, they can react and change the way they grow, kind of communicating and telling us what is going on. In this video, we'll have a look at different signs succulents give off when something specific goes on in their environment and how they can be translated. When all is ideal in the life of a succulent, they are likely to grow a shade of green, blue and or grey. Some can have a bit of colour around the edges or tips, but they will mostly be greenish. This usually happens when the temperature is nice and warm, there's enough water and root space and when the light is a good balance of sun and shade. Basically, the succulent is saying everything is just dandy and there's nothing causing it stress. For instance, here the Echeveria Violet Queen is just growing happily, producing lots of offsets. But look at what happens to the colour when temperatures drop and it gets cold. The Violet Queen is communicating it's chilly. I guess it's like when we get blushing cheeks due to cold. In fact, most succulents will tell you they're cold in winter by displaying vibrant colours. As long as it's not below freezing point, you can enjoy this great display. The great majority are not very frost tolerant and can die or get frostbite when frost and snow settle. In my mind, and this is only my opinion, when succulents get colourful due to cold, they're saying something like, hey, just to let you know, we're getting a bit cold over here. We can die if it gets worse, so keep an eye, okay? It is not only cold that stresses succulents though. Sun, lack of water and lack of root space can also have this effect. Stress succulents are also often nothing to worry about. While they are communicating something is happening, it does not necessarily mean they are going to die. Healthy and stressed succulents are not mutually exclusive. However, if conditions get worse or don't improve for a long time, the stressed succulents can start displaying more worrying signs. If a couple of leaves die, dry out or drop from your succulents every now and again, it is usually nothing to worry about and completely natural. But if they start falling off en masse, the succulent is saying that something may be very wrong. Rapid leaf loss can be caused by a multitude of things, but the most common causes are exposure to extreme sun during heat waves, rot or other fungal disease, overwatering and keeping sun-loving succulents indoors. If there are any dark spots like this, it's very likely some kind of fungal disease has attacked the succulent due to overwatering, frequent rain and humidity. And this poor Echeveria is slowly losing its leaves because it's being kept indoors. Many succulents are not good indoor plants, so if your succulent is struggling inside, it is very likely saying there's simply not enough light for it to grow well. In most cases, when succulents stretch out and grow leggy, they're looking for more light. It is a very clear communication method for succulents and they are literally trying to move themselves. I've planted this garden about 5 years ago with bushes in the middle and succulents around the edges. But the bushes have now grown so much they are casting shade over the succulents, starving them of sunlight. But look at what the succulents are doing in order to get themselves back in the sun. They have focused all their energy into growing a long stalk. There's no pups and I haven't seen them flower for some years either. The only objective is to move from under the bushes. In some succulents, this kind of growth can also happen when they're severely root bound or when the soil is very poor quality. They will grow a long stalk to try and find better spot to root into. In indoor succulents, this is the kind of growth you're likely to see. Very pale, with the rosette growing from the middle up and, in some cases, the leaves will point downwards. If the conditions don't improve, this will likely cause the bottom leaves dying in the near future.
Wrinkly leaves usually mean the plant is drying out and needs to be watered. When a succulent is exposed to direct sun during heat waves, they can also get wrinkly leaves even when they have been watered. The sun is basically drying them out super fast. When the sun is creating wrinkles, it is best to move the plant in a shaded spot outdoors or under shade cloth if you have one. Sun that's strong can cause burns and even death. Some succulents are a bit sensitive to overwatering, and if they sit in soggy potting mix for too long without being able to dry out, their leaves can burst open. This does not happen to all succulents, but if you see it, the succulent is telling you to let it dry out. Many succulents are naturally small and or slow growing and you may have nothing to worry about. Another reason for little to no growth is dormancy when succulents kind of go to sleep. The months during which succulents are dormant can differ based on where in the world you are, a specific succulent or temperature change. It is not unheard of that succulents shut down during extended heat waves. For instance, in my part of the world, most succulents will grow from spring to autumn. But some succulents such as Aeonium or Small Leaf Sedum grow better during the cooler months. But in other cases, they may be communicating something is stopping them from growing. That something can be living in a pot that's too small or being root bound. These succulents will grow very little and can even shrink through leaf loss if they are not repotted or provided with nutrients. Succulents indoors, even when they are shade tolerant, are likely to grow only a bit unless they have lots of light. Until we figure out how to translate plant noises, we have to watch their body language to figure out what they may be telling us. After growing many different succulents and other plants for over a decade, there's no doubt in my mind they communicate their needs and experiences. All we need to do is listen with our eyes wide open. And that's it for today. I hope this video was useful and if you'd like to add something or have a question to ask you can do so in the comments below. To learn more about succulents hit the subscribe button or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.